afternoon, this is Pete, also known as Risk for Rewards on Twitter. Currently around 4,000 followers. Uh, if you want to find any of my anti posts, they're all pinned to my profile. So that's Risk for Rewards on Twitter. But today I'm currently ask, answering a few more Twitter questions. Um, the next one is a Wednesday Acker for someone who's going. Stuart Keane has asked Best Festival Acker and Acker for Day 2 because he's there. I'm also there on the Day 2 and I landed a 100 to 1 Acker a few years ago. And that was but on the morning of the day, so it's not saying that you need to do it right now. But I'll have a quick fire through of just current thoughts of. Um, my Wednesday because I think Wednesday will hopefully be a good day for us um, as punters. Um, the Ballymore is a tough nut to crack at the moment because there's so much uncertainty. Um, quick skim, Sir Gerard, very impressive the other day, jumping a bit sketchy but he's got a huge engine, he's been there and he's done it obviously last year by winning the bumper, right full fav and if him or Dysart Dynamo go um, to the Ballymore, we, I think Willie will split them. Um, they'd probably be the pick for me because they do look the two best horses. Journey with me is very impressive, but I really have him down as a stayer. I've backed him for the Albert Bartlett, and that is the race that I want to see him in. If he's not in the Albert Bartlett and he goes to the Ballymore, then I'll think twice, but he looks a stayer rather than a speed horse to me. Um, Festival Novices Chase. This race is an absolute mess. All of us are hanging on to big slips at 25 to 1, 16 to 1 on Galapun des Champs, thinking it was a certainty for him to go here. Um, I think it's the right call for him to go here. First time out, he looked electric, could have gone any trip. Second time out, his jumping was a lot more sketchier. And at Cheltenham, there's a massive thing at the moment with both uh, Bob Wallinger and Galloping Deschamps. A lot of people are forgetting how inexperienced these horses are because of the dry rain, the weather and all these sort of things. And I think the Irish have changed their plan. Their new festival plan is Christmas first run, Dublin Race Festival second run, Cheltenham third run, and then still have left in the tank ready for Punchestown. Whereas before they were running them right through the winter. So these two are both coming in very inexperienced. So Galloping Deschamps, right full five, and I do think that he'll win if he runs here. However, Brave Man's game is looking better and better by the day. He's campaigned the old school way, like the RSA, how you used to have to campaign, where they've had hardy campaigns, four or five races, battle hardened, and now it's getting a fight. I think he is a brilliant horse, but he was exposed by Bob Ollinger last year. He's clearly improved for offence, and it may well be the case that he's improved too far, or he's just too professional for Gallop and Deschamps. But those two are a mile clear, and obviously being on Brave Man's Game at 16s, Gallop and Deschamps at 40s, like you could split your acker obviously accordingly, but Gallop and Deschamps, you can't really do anything until we know where, where he's going. Coral Cump, I'm not going to go into that until close to the time. Um, Champion Chase, Shishkin, look no further. That's, that's it for me, for Shishkin. You can cover on Anagamine because I think he is the one below. I backed Chak and Passoir at 7-1 last year, um, in, in April last year after he routed the field and he looked brilliant. The problem is he just keeps doing it in Ireland. If he makes it, and if he makes it, then maybe he gets a chance. But Willie even says he can't train to 100% and all these sort of things. He's a fragile horse. So I think the top two have it. If you want to cover, cover, but Shishkin all the way for me. Um, cross country straight again Tiger Roll all the way he's been there he's done it he's got the he's got the t-shirt and more multiple festival winner he's won this race and he, he just doesn't stop winning when when he's there for his big day that is him um, and he was electric last year everyone else doubted him I put up in my column for We Love Betting to go against Easy's Land who was even money and to go with Tiger Roll it was about 8 to 1 back into I think 6s or 5s on the day and he just absolutely destroyed the field. He had he has had a, a, an off year, but since then, he's he's not looked back. And he's done it on soft. He's done it on really soft, and he's done it on good. I think if the better the ground, the better for him. And looking at the field, Prengard, um, Edna Bolga says that he needs a run. Well, why didn't he run him this week in the cross country chase in your backyard that you had the one two with? So there's clearly something more going on there. So he may not turn up. Ajas we haven't seen for ages. Coco Beach is a handicapper. Can't see him going here. Easy's Land has gone to McManus and um, uh, sorry, he's gone to John Joe O'Neill, which to me says that he'll be going to the National. So if he does go here, this will just be a prep. And the rest are much of a muchness. He's a clear standout, and he could easily go off below two to one. So if you want him, he, he'd be in your acker. Grand Annual, not a lot of thought so far because the weights aren't out yet. Brave Siasco, I did mention the other day, and I wouldn't put you off back in at 12 to 1 because that run went as planned. He was um, getting weight and he finished in behind the big two, so he's not going to get smacked up the weights for that. Um, and I think he's a lot better than that, and he's got a lot of better 
jumping champion bumper what a race so redemption day i'll start with at eight to one he's the outsider of the front three but he looked very good he just might be a little bit exposed he could be an absolute tool but he could get exposed on the day through inexperience and then american mike looked like an absolute machine and his form is stacking up really nicely horse that he beat went really well in the mayor's bumper at dublin racing festival but fasar vega jesus you, you just can't help but be eye poking out i mean I, i'd be disappointed the, the majority of people are already on at 20 to 1 or at least double figures because it was well publicized everywhere um before race and then obviously again four to one before the dublin racing festival so he is definitely the one to beat however kill Crute was the one to beat last year and he got beaten at odds on by his stable mate However, I think Fasal Vega's in another league, and I love the Q Vega bloodlines and stuff going into Cheltenham. So that is the horse for me. However, I'm hoping American Mike, I'll see about four to one, something like that, close to the time. Or if it doesn't, and it is three to one, I'll have a cover bet on him. Um, but I'm on a Fasal Vega at twenty to one, um, and I wouldn't put you off that. So to summarise, if you were doing like a scoop, uh, quick place pot. Uh, currently, obviously, because a lot's going to change. These aren't final selections. Fasal Vega and American Mike, um, Tiger Roll. Uh, Shishkin and I'd, sp I'd split your stakes accordingly obviously more on the short one but Gallop and Deschamps and Brave Man's Game you can back um, uh, Brave Man's Game anyway because you know he's going to he's going to run there but obviously it just changes the complexion of the race if Gallop and Deschamps run so yep that'll be it for me um, Stuart and then finally five bankers by chance from George Fulford Smith so he said Honeysuckle Bob Shishkin Faisal Vega and Alaho well, Honeysuckle, yeah, absolutely, totally agree. I don't think she's looked as good as she has been, but I think that's down to stable form. Same with Rachel. Rachel's not looked great this year, and that will be down to confidence because of the stable form. So they are going to have a big ask on the day that they need to pick something up. Henry really needs to pull his feet up, but I'm hoping that, just like last year, pulls her cat out of the bag, and she looks class above. Um, uh, Shishkin, yep, yeah, totally agree. Um, Fasal Vega, I've just covered. Um even money is not a good place to be back and even money shots at the Cheltenham bumper and I think you'll probably get a bigger price on the day but he might start SP he might go odds on uh, between him and American Mike as discussed um, Alaho if he repeats last year he's a class apart there's plenty you could add in the background I do like um, Sham Blue very similar run style and has been prepped for this race only so I wouldn't mind a cover bet on that at 12 to 1 um, but I do think he is banking material he's got himself to beat um, Bob Ollinger I would not have in this category because Bob, yes, I do think Bob is a really good horse. I have backed Bob in plenty of bets at bigger prices like four to one and stuff. Um, and he's got a favourites chance, but he is very short at the moment on his thing, just like Gallop and Deschamps. And as I've said, horses that have raced twice going into the festival as novice chasers, they do not have a great record. Um, does that mean that I'm going to go against Bob? No, absolutely not. If Gallop and Deschamps isn't in the Turners, then it's Bob all the way. If Gallop and Deschamps goes to the Turners, then it makes it more interesting. But I wouldn't have him down as a banker currently. But he is a very good horse, and I will be backing him, whatever he does run in. I just really hope that Henry pulls him pulls himself up, because we need some, some hot form coming in, because they have been cold. And I think these horses that Henry's got have just been running through the poor form and winning despite the, the fact that the stable are in a cloud. Um, and then finally, so Honeysuckle, Bob, Shishkin, Fasal Vega and Alho. Oh, and also album photo looking solid now with others not showing true credentials for Gold Cup. I think the Gold Cup's wide open. Always is. It's like the triumph to me. I just wait till on the day and back something then. I backed Alho and Manila Indo at the start of the season at 12 to 1 and 6 to 1. I wouldn't put anyone off either of those two still now, but I don't even know what price they are now. Um, like I said, it's going to be one of the most over. It would not surprise me if it's four to one the field on the day for that race. So no rush. Do I like Apu Tard? Yeah, I do. And I do think I do. It would not surprise me if uh, it reversed that form of Galvin, even though Galvin's got good Cheltenham form. So hope that helps.